Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create all the vectors needed to make a Santa snack tray. If you'd like to see how we made this tray, there's a full tutorial linked in the description below. So let's open Vectric and get started. So first we're gonna set up our stock. Now, what I've got is a stock here of 350 millimeters on the X axis. I've got a stock then of 600 millimeters on the Y axis and my stock is 40 millimeters thick. So for this project, we're gonna set our X and Y date and position from the center of our stock because this is gonna be a two-sided operation. So as we flip the stock over, I wanna be able to center then exactly to the center again. So just for help, I'm gonna add very high quality on the modeling resolution, just so we get a better picture of seeing what it is we're carving. Okay, so the first vector we're going to create is gonna have a internal, uh, sorry, an external radius of 50 millimeters. And that is going to be 300 millimeters on the X axis and 550 millimeters on the Y axis. So if I come over to the center point, it's gonna auto snap now that to the center of our stock. And the next vector I'm gonna create is the inside dish of our tray. So I'm gonna come back over to the draw rectangles tool and I'm gonna select a 25 millimeter external radius. And we want our bowl to be 270 millimeters on the X and 400 millimeters on the Y axis. So there we go, nice and simply, that's just snapped straight to the center for us. So the next thing to create is gonna be some handle holes. So these handle holes are gonna be same 25 millimeter radius on the corners and they're gonna be 120 by 25. So the fact that I have a 25 millimeter radius on a 25 millimeter rectangle means we're gonna have some lovely rounds in the corners. So if I just deselect that vector, you can see those nice rounds in the corner. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another one of these handle vectors, and I'm gonna use that 25 millimeter width as a spacer. So I've got this mock handle vector selected, and I'm gonna select the vector of the bowl. And I'm gonna use this tool here on the alignment options, okay? And as you can see now, that's perfectly spaced each edge. So I'm using that mock handle vector then just as a spacing tool. So when I deselect that one and delete it, you can see I'm now perfectly 25 millimeters spaced between the handle and the internal bowl vector. So I'm gonna highlight that handle and I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard and I'm gonna press C for copy and then V for paste. And that's given me a carbon copy to repeat the same process down at the bottom. So again, I'll select the mock handle profile or I'll call it a spacer. I'll select our spacer vector and I'm gonna select our bowl vector and I'm gonna use the alignment tool and I'm gonna snap those two together. Then I'm gonna hold down control and press C followed by V and give myself a secondary vector which will form as our handle hole. And then what I'll do again is I'll select our new handle hole and I'll select the spacer and I'll press the alignment button and that's gonna snap perfectly again. So I'll take the spacer and I'll press delete and I'll get rid of that. So what we have now is two handle vectors perfectly spaced across the X axis and they're both spaced 25 millimeters away from our bulk height. Okay, so at this stage here, to give you some visual reference, um, I'm gonna start creating some vectors. So to give you some visual reference, I'm gonna start creating some toolpaths. So the first toolpath is gonna be a pocket. And for that tool, I'm gonna use a 25 millimeter ball nose cutter. And I'm gonna cut into this project by 15 millimeters. So if I calculate that, That's what we're gonna have, is a 15 millimeter deep pocket. Now later on, we're gonna add a V-carve to the bottom of that deep pocket, and that will give us some final finish detail. I'm also gonna very quickly show you how I created the cutouts now for the handle holes. So if you select one vector and then hold shift on your keyboard and select the second vector, you've got the two handle holes selected at the same time. And I'm gonna do that as an internal inside profile cut. And for that, I'm gonna use an eight millimeter end mill that will cut 42 millimeters 
at maximum and we're going to cut 41 millimeters because our stock is 40. I'm going to add some tabs and with hardwoods it's always nice to add 3D tabs and we're going to add those here and here and then we're going to zoom down to the bottom and we're going to add one here and here okay we're going to make these tabs 8 mil tall by 25 millimeters long and because this oak is such a hard material we're also going to add a ramp so for this ramp i'm going to make it eight millimeters long and i'm going to make it a smooth transition into the cut so i'll call this one handle holes so i'll always get this warning to tell me that i'm cutting too deep for the material so as you can see the material thickness is 40 mil and the maximum tool depth is 41 mil so we're going to cut one millimeter into our spoil board so if I zoom in and then hold control on my keypad and hold the left mouse button down, I can move my preview around to get a good visual representation on how the cut's gonna look. I'm also at this stage, for visual purposes, gonna show you the outside profile cut. So again, selecting the correct vector and selecting the profile cut toolpath, I'm gonna ask that to cut outside and I've already got my eight millimeter end mill selected and I've already got the appropriate cut depth. So I'm gonna to add to this project a reverse finishing cut at 0.01 millimeters. So that's a tiny little skim. It's gonna take off that outer edge then just to clean up any remnants of any sort of tool chatter. Again, we're also gonna add the same eight by 25 millimeter tabs. And I'm gonna ask for it to put a tab here, 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 and here. Okay, so for this type of project, where you're gonna have the cutter going up and down into this project for 21 passes, it will leave a lot of tool marks on the side of your oak. So to get away from this, you can ask it to create some leads. I'm gonna make my lead angle 45 millimeters, and I want my lead length to be seven millimeters. And I'm also gonna ask it to do a lead out. So now I've named my tool path as the outer profile. When I ask it to preview we will see exactly what these leads are so if i come down to this part of the preview you can see when my tool is plunging in and out of the stock down here okay it is doing it away from the edge of my project so it's going to plunge in over here and then it's going to move in at a 45 degree angle to the edge of my stock then it's gonna go all the way around the stock. And then when it comes back out, it will follow this corner and it will come back out over the project here. And this is, like I said, gonna save any tool marks and any burning on the side of my project. So very, very good tip. Okay, so now we've done all of the basics for the top part of our tray. I'll just move that around so you can see what it's gonna look like. So now we've created some basic vectors and basic tool paths that's gonna show the rough outline of this project. Now we're gonna have some fun by adding some V-card detail to really bring this project to life. Okay, so for the first part of this, I am going to select the text function on V-card and I would like my letters to be 30 millimeters tall. And the font that I'm gonna go for is gonna be script MT bold. And we're gonna have Santa's snacks. Okay. So as you can see, I've got my Santa snacks text done at the correct size for me. Now, if I go into rotate selected objects and I ask it to turn 90 degrees, that text is now gonna be facing backwards on my smart bench. So I will change it back to where it was before. Now, if I select these vectors and rotate it by 270 degrees, that is now gonna be facing forward. So as I stand at my console, I can see that lovely text come to life um, the right way around for me. Okay, and any other detail I put in by rotating that 270 degrees, that will do the same. So I'm just gonna move this around until I'm happy with where it is. And I'm gonna select this center functioning tool to snap that to be the center of my stock. So if you remember, my actual tray vectors are the center of my stock. And now it, this text is also centered. So if I select this text again, I can just kind of move it around to my heart's content using the arrow keys on the keyboard to get it where I want it. 
Okay, so now I have the text set out roughly where I would like it. I'm also going to add um, this lovely little nativity scene type vector, which has got some reindeer and some pine trees and a little bit of foreground. Okay, now I want to orientate this by dragging a box over the whole of the design. I want to orientate this so this bottom part of the design isn't too close to the inner lip of the bowl because this inner lip, if I go back to the 3D view, you can see that this inner lip has a curve to it. So I don't want my 60 degree V cutter clashing with the side of the bowl and I don't want it disturbing the bottom part of this rounded lip, okay? So I'm quite happy with it there just for argument's sake. And all I'm gonna do now is just bring this Santa text vector down a bit just to even the space out. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select the Santa tray vector and the nativity scene. Again, by drawing a box around all of those parts and pressing G to group those together. I can also hold the shift button down on the keyboard and then left click on the Santa snacks. And I've got all of those vectors that I wish to V-carve. I've got them all selected together. So I'm gonna come over to the tool pass for the V-carve. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select my 60 degree V-carve cutter. I'm gonna have a start depth of 15 millimeters because it's gonna sit in the bottom of this 15 millimeter bowl. And I'm gonna ask my flat depth to be two millimeters. And I'm also gonna add a four millimeter clearance pass. We're actually gonna use a good quality end mill, so don't worry too much about this. That's just the description I was left with. And I'm also gonna ramp the in cut in by four millimeters, just so we're not plunging straight down into that timber. We're gonna move into it nice and gradually. So as I calculate this, what you should see now is that lovely scene now sitting at the bottom of our tray. And then we've got Santa snacks. Now, one thing I have noticed because I've grouped these into one tool path, this is not the desired look I want for my text. So I'm gonna open this file back up again. I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna deselect Santa snacks. So we'll recalculate that. We're not gonna worry about the, um, the vector issue it's asking us about because as you can see, it's still carving to exactly what we wanted. So in order to get the right look on our text, I'm gonna select that text on its own. And I'm gonna ask it to do a separate V carve and we're gonna have the same 15 millimeter start depth. And I'm gonna deselect the flat depth and I'm gonna remove the clearance pass. Okay, and that way now we're gonna get a nice deep 60 degree V carve on the Santa Snacks text. That looks much better. Okay, so now we've got all of the profiles and our toolpaths made for our handle cutouts, our outer profile, our inner bowl, and then that nice V-carve that's gonna sit in the bottom of the bowl. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double check all my feeds and speeds to make sure I'm happy with how this is gonna cut. And then we're gonna move on to saving some of these toolpaths into G-code. I'm gonna show you some tips then on how to minimize the amount of G-code files you run. So now we've got all of these vectors and profiles made. What we'll do now is we're gonna look at saving some of these toolpaths off onto our computer. So what I'll do at this stage is I will just go through and I will start to rename these toolpaths. That way then when I'm saving it, it's just an easy reference to know exactly what I'm saving and what cutter I should be saving and in what order. So first things first, I wanna make this outer profile cut the very last cut we do. Okay, so we've got our bowl clearance here, which is gonna be our big 25 mil dish carving cutter. Then we've got our handle holes, which is an eight millimeter cutter. And then we've got our V carves, okay? So I'm gonna ask it to save our first tool path, which as you can see, that's a 25 mil ball nose cutter there. I'm happy with that. And it's also got the bowl clearance written there. So I'm gonna save this tool path now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new folder and we'll call this Santa tray. If I open up this file here, we're gonna add at the front of our description, Santa tray. So that way then when I transfer it over to SmartBench via the Smart Transfer software, I'll know exactly which ones I'm using and in what order as well. So I'm also gonna add that this is the 25 millimeter ball nose. Okay, so we'll save that one. So the next toolpath I'm going to save is gonna to be the 
eight millimeter cutter cutting these handle holes. So again, I'm gonna click on save tool path and where I've got handle holes, if I click at the beginning, we'll put Santa tray and then eight millimeter end mill. So again, I'm gonna know what I'm cutting and what tool I need for it when I'm over at the console on the smart bench. Now, where I've got these two V-carves, they're gonna be using exactly the same cutter. And I'm gonna click here where it says visual tool paths into one file. And I'm gonna select this V-carve and this V-carve. And you will notice if I look up here, they're both registering from the same tool. That's gonna to be our Santa Snacks text. And that's gonna be all the finished V-carve then for our nativity scene. So if I go to select tool path, that's now grouping both of those into one G-code file. So that's Santa Tray V Carve 60 degree bit. Okay, so again, I know what I'm cutting, which is my Santa Tray, and I know what tool I'm using, and I know what tool path I'm running. Save. And then the final one to save off will be the 8mm profile cut. So, ooh. see, so where I've got these two selected, I almost saved the V Carve twice. So let's go back to select the tool path option up here and the blue highlighted box is gonna tell me what I'm saving. So that's gonna be our Santa tray. Okay, and then I'll come across here to let it know that it's an eight millimeter end mill. Perfect. So for the top side of our project, that is all of our G code saved, all of our tool paths created, and that's ready to send over to SmartBench to get cutting. So for the top part of our project, we've got all of the G-code saved. That's now ready to go into Smart Transfer and send across to SmartBench. So now we're gonna start creating the vectors for the back, which is gonna be a relief cut. So you've got space then to get your hands under this tray and pick up those handle holes. So these vectors are gonna be waist side vectors. So ignore all of this detail here. We're gonna use these outer vectors to space our relief cuts. And it's gonna be on the surface of this plan, but you're gonna cut it as a totally separate file then once you've spun your stock over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some rectangles with square corners this time. And we want this vector to overlap because again, we're using that 25 millimeter ball nose cutter, which is going to give us a nice rounded feature along this edge but we want that now to be centered with our stock. And I'm gonna put that to be 15 millimeters away from this edge. So to do that, I'm gonna create another vector here at 15 millimeters tall, and I'm gonna center it up across here. So again, to align this correctly and to utilize the thickness of this vector, I've got my vector selected, and now I'm gonna select, by holding shift, I'm gonna select the bowl vector next and I'm gonna use this alignment tool to snap those two together. Then I'm gonna select this larger vector, followed by this 15 mil spacer vector, and I'm going to snap those two together. So because I want to replicate this now at the bottom of my project, I've got both of these vectors selected and I'm gonna hold control, and I'm gonna press C for copy, and then I'm gonna press V for paste. And at this stage, I'm going to use the mirror selected objects feature and I'm gonna flip them vertically. So I'll come back down and I'll select the bottom of our bowl vector and I will use this alignment tool. And again, we snap that exactly where we want it. Okay, so now I want these two vectors at the bottom of our tray to be exactly the same. And the first thing I'm gonna do is press G on the keyboard to group those together so they stay in perfect alignment at the bottom end. I'm gonna hold control and press C, and while still holding control, I'm gonna press V, and I'm gonna use the mirrored selected objects feature, and I'm gonna flip them vertically. Now with those vectors still selected, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna hold shift and select our bowl, and I'm gonna use this alignment feature here to snap those two across. Now, I'm gonna remove this small vector, which we've only been using as a spacer. So to do that, I'm gonna highlight these grouped vectors and I'm gonna press U on the keyboard, which is gonna ungroup them. I'm gonna select just this vector alone and press the delete button and now it's gone. I'm gonna come back up to the top and again, I'm gonna select these grouped vectors. I'm gonna press U to ungroup them and I'll select our little spacer 
and I'll press delete and they're gone. Now the only last thing to do now is to select both of these cutouts and I'm going to cut these as a pocket out of our stock. Again, using the same 25 millimeter ball nose cutter and I want to cut this 25 millimeters deep, which is going to leave us with a 15 millimeter thick lip. Now, as I press calculate, as you're going to see, it's going to distort the visual aspect of our proposed design, but that's not a problem because we're cutting all of the first tool paths from the surface of our stock. And then as we flip it over, we're going to cut this one, which I'm going to call this handle reliefs. Okay. So, all I need to do now really is just save this final G code and we have everything ready then to cut our tray. So again, Santa tray, handle reliefs, and I'm gonna do that as bottom side. That's a 25 millimeter ball nose. And that's saved. All of this G code is now ready to send over to Smart Bunch via Smart Transfer. Right. I'll just do and um, I'll just do that to this camera. Uh, okay. There we go, guys. That's how we made the Santa snack tray, which we cut on SmartBench. We put a link to this file in the description below, so you can download this and cut it yourself. If you'd like to see us cut this on SmartBench, there's a link to that tutorial in the description below. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this interesting. And Merry Christmas. Yeah.